Okay, thank you very much for coming to see this webinar today. We're going to be talking about the new search functionality within the Trillion platform, within the delivery platform specifically. Um, and this is some detail we've put together with myself and Dragon, who's the product owner for the delivery platform. So this is a brief overview of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to give you an overview of what and why we're building Trillion Site Search. I'm going to talk to you around how you mark up your content for searching and indexing. We'll describe the out of the box experience that you get with the new search features. And we'll show you some examples of how GraphQL can now be used to build queries and get access to your content. And within that, we'll show detail around multimedia content and how you can use the same search mechanism for both Trillion Sites and Trillion Docs content. So first up, why Trillion Sites Search? Well, right now, Trillion Sites doesn't have an out-of-the-box search solution. Typically, customers will use si for t or they will build their own custom deployer extension or some customers have built storage extensions. These will then populate you know, customer specific solutions. But clearly there's a need for a, a site search solution because it's a kind of a key feature of most um, delivery platforms. And also we've already built this same search infrastructure to support the Trillion Docs release within the DXD. So it made sense to align using that same elastic search base infrastructure to support um, site search as well. And as part of this, we're upgrading our support for Elasticsearch 7. And we've done some changes to the existing query service to support the new search features from sites. And we've also added support now to our GraphQL content service. So you can now also query the search indexes for both docs and sites repositories. So here's a brief overview of how our new sites search is wired together within the various components in the delivery platform. So on the left here you see the two content management systems. Um, they're using the same deployer mechanism that they currently use but with the new Trillion Sites search we've introduced a a new data pipeline publishing mechanism. So we, we get when you're publishing content and your publications from Trillion Sites and you configure it correctly, you get uh, essentially two lots of information coming from that um, transport package. One is the, the regular, if you like, publishing pipeline and this new data publishing pipeline, which adds extra information that our delivery platform can use to determine whether to index it. Now within the deployer service itself, um, if you're familiar with the sites 9.1, uh, we've introduced the whole add-on extension mechanism. So we already have support for docs and sites extensions, but what we've done for the sites extension is we've introduced this new index step here, which operates as part of the whole pipeline within the sites piece and that now posts its content to our existing index service that was used for Trillion Docs, and that then indexes into an Elasticsearch backend. And again, the reason we have this intermediate service and not talking direct to Elasticsearch is because this gives us flexibility in future if ever we wish to change the technology behind us to support search. So right now, obviously, Elasticsearch is our platform of choice, but we could change that search system and our interfaces would stay the same because we'd be talking to the index service in this case. Also new in this diagram is the query service. So this is a, an existing service that we had to support uh, the Trillion Docs search extension, but we're now also using it within our um, deployer pi pipeline for sites um, in order to support faster updates to content. So if you've seen some of the other um, webinars that we've been discussing around how the data model has changed. We are now pushing from Trillion Sites the ability to publish content components independently of pages. So what that means is if you change a component that happens to be used on multiple pages, clearly you don't want to have to republish all those pages as well. You just want to re-update the index 
for that component. So in order that we can store the correct detail and data within our Elasticsearch, um, we need to work out which pages are using that component that has changed. And that's where we make use of this query service here. Um, and then finally, on the right hand side here, as I mentioned on the previous slide, we've now introduced the ability for the content service to query um, search results directly rather than having to use just the query service and then having to build up another GraphQL request to get extra service. So what this allows you to quite neatly do is to combine the results of the search results and all the details that you get from our master broker database, which includes you know, further information about metadata and types and all the other things that you might want to get from the broker database. The question is how you then determine what gets indexed within our Elasticsearch cluster. So if you go into your Trillion Sites content management editorial interface, you see when you're designing your, um, your fields, there's this new section at the bottom. And there's two checkboxes here. One is that do you actually want this whole thing to be published? And that determines whether that um, specific field even gets pushed into the transport package that gets sent to the deployer. And then secondly is the whether the content is searchable. And then that then determines whether our Elasticsearch index will mark that field as searchable for your website visitors. So it gives you a bit of control over the sort of data that you might want to push whilst still maybe maintaining metadata that you don't want to end up exposed to the world. And then to support the um, Elasticsearch, obviously we support the full multilingual multi features of Trillion Sites. So the locale, which is split in the editorial interface between English, between language and region, in this case, English and United Kingdom GB, that would map onto a locale that we then store within Elasticsearch and it allows us to do language specific storage for the content that we index. And that allows you to specify different stemmers and processes for those specific languages. And it means you can then search for your content um, with a sort of locale specific angle to it. So what do you get out of the box? So as I mentioned previously, we have a, um, a content service is now pre-configured to support search. Um, so the site's search extension, if you have it configured on your deployer, on your content service, beg your pardon, would have the search pre-configured in here. And you'll see that in the application properties, which is one of the um, standard configuration points we use in our services, there's this um, configuration point at the end there. And as you see here, it's pre-configured for two profiles here. But if you wish to disable search for any reason, you don't want the overhead of the search um, libraries being loaded, you can remove search from this list of profiles and then it just behaves as it does in Sites 9.1 as a content service without search facilities. And just to reiterate here, this whole search mechanism relies upon the new data pipeline content coming from Trillion Sites. So that does mean that if you have existing content, you do have to republish your content in order to be able to have that content, content indexed within Elasticsearch. Um, and then in terms of how we configure this within the service, we have uh, essentially we have this um, search provider which talks to Elasticsearch underneath. And this is why you need to add in details of your Elasticsearch endpoint into the search properties, which is another new um, properties file for the content service. And that would just be configured to point to your cluster. And from a deploy, deployer side of things, um, if you're familiar with how the deployer works, it's essentially a, a workflow engine that has a number of pipelines in it. Within those pipelines are a number of steps. So you can see this snippet on the right hand side here that shows you the additional indexing steps that we've added for Trillion Sites. One is to support um, indexing new content and the others is to support um, unpublishing or undeploying as it's referred to in our um, pipeline. And you'll also see in the middle here is this section here that allows you to determine which uh, types of 
binary content or multimedia content you wish to index. So um, Elasticsearch provides support for a number of binary types and we base it based upon the file extension of those types. So these are the, the standard ones we support out the box. And if you don't want to support, or you don't want to index some of these things, you can just remove it from this list. And you can disable it altogether clearly if you set it to an empty list. So GraphQL is our new API of choice that we introduced in Sites 9.0 and the um, DXD 11.0 release. And this is where we're moving most of our APIs to going forward. Um, and as a result, we've added in some new root queries to our GraphQL endpoint that allows you to access uh, the search interface essentially. So you can see some of the root queries shown on the right here. We've got a basic one that allows you to get a specific um, item from the index. And then there's a field search. So this allows you to provide a single field for your search and then have um, the results of those fields come back. Uh, our, all of our search features now also include full cursor-based pagination. So this is to align with um, how GraphQL generally deals with large numbers of results. So rather than page-based pagination, which would be a sort of page one, page two, page three, we use this cursor-based. So you ask for a specific number of um, results in your request. And then after the results are returned, it gives you a pointer to the next chunk of results. And the re reason that is useful is it means that if content is being republished whilst you're searching, it means your pages don't go out of sync. You're always getting a consistent set of results as you scroll or as you page through your um, search results. So here's a sample GraphQL um, query. So this specific example is a search by field. Um, you can specify the specific Elasticsearch index name if you wish. By default, it'll use the standard um, delivery platform index, which is called UDP index. You can see here that you're passing in a, a specific field in this case. So this is uh, the English um, content field. And our, the way our fields are managed in Elasticsearch is that you have um, uh, sort of generic fields that don't have this suffix on here, or you have these language specific fields, which allow you to delve into the different languages that we have indexed within your system. And then at the bottom here is the value that you're trying to match by this query. And you can see the, the standard sort of results you get coming out of this. And we'll go through uh, a few short demos in a minute to elaborate on this. So we also have two others um, new queries would allow you to do slightly more complex searching within uh, GraphQL. So one is search by criteria. And what that allows you to do is build up some basic um, logical criteria. So you're allowed to do sort of ands and ors and multiple fields and those kind of things. So this is probably a common use case for most customers where you want to do a, a simple search, but you want to do some basic criteria in there. And then we also have this what's called search by raw query. And what this takes is um, the criteria that our IQ query API builds. And what that allows you to do is to build some quite complex criteria using a full um, DSL language in order to build up those queries. You pass in the resultant string into here, and then that will allow you to do quite complex queries on here. So you can think of this first one here is a sort of typical use cases where you just want basic ands and ors and logic cases. And the second case was, would be where you have a, a complex query that you want to build up and you would need to use, um, or you wouldn't need to, but you can use our native criteria builders that are available in Java and .NET in order to build those criteria strings, or you can just do it by hand as a string, of course. You'll see here also the result filter. So this allows you to do post filtering on the results of the queries. So not only can you constrain the input based on a specific criteria, but you can also change the results, filter out certain things that you don't want, and of course add a sort if you wish to those results. 
Um, so here's an example of a, uh, a search by raw query here. You can see the beginnings of that raw query. It's a, a string that's passed in, and this is the result of building the criteria using our criteria builder. So multimedia components. So as you saw in the list earlier, we support some standard types, so the usual typical ones of the Microsoft products, PDFs, and the open data format files are all supported. And what will happen is um, Elasticsearch uses its own ingest attachment plugin in order to process those files. Um, and then that content is just indexed as matching content within our index. And then, then obviously, if you do a search, searching for content or terms within that content, you will get back those um, components in the case of Tridian Sites content or binaries in the case of Tridian Docs content. Um, it's worth noting that the reason we make use of Elasticsearch's own ingest plugin is that um, not only it means that we don't have to do the pre-processing of this content, but it means you can actually configure Elasticsearch if you wish to have um, specific nodes purely for doing binary ingestion. So it allows you to, to scale up your system and configure your nodes. If you're expecting large volumes of binary content, you may wish to set up multiple nodes that are designed just for this. And then Elasticsearch handles that indexing for you. And of course, multi-language support is supported here as well. So where there's content coming from different um, language results, they will get put into the appropriate fields in those content fields that we talked about earlier. Here's an example of a, a binary search. So it's just one of the standard search um, root queries that I've already spoken about. But in this case, you can see I've searched for what in this case was a, an Adobe back Acrobat PDF file, and you can see the results come back. There's the content of the file, and you can see that it has a URL pointing to the location of that um, PDF on that component. And again, in this case, you can see it's being stored in content English because it has an English GB locale on the component. And then finally, just want to touch upon how you expect to use the two together. So customers quite readily now are beginning to use docs and sites um, together, typically where they want to bring their technical content together and sort of mash it up, if you like, with the Trillion Sites marketing publications. So we can already do this at the broker level through the use of our um, taxonomy connectors. But clearly now we're using the same Elasticsearch backend to store this content. You can obviously search for content within both um, repositories, if you like, and have um, the results returned within a single request. So there's an example here where you're doing a, a search. Again, it's a simple query, this one, search by field on content English in this case. And you can see here in the result, and I'll talk about what these search result and broker result mean later on. But you can see here the ID of the um, Elasticsearch entries. One is coming from sites, notified by the fact it has this TCM prefix. Another one is coming from docs here, identified by this ish prefix here. So you can see the single search request, but you'll get results back across the two types. And you can see here also that the um, for the case of the docs content, obviously docs stores its content as pages, whereas in sites, it's a component within a page, which is why you see the type as component here. Okay, so let me just jump across to our GraphQL client. I'm using um, GraphQL Playground here. You can use any GraphQL client to talk to our service. Um, obviously, the, the way that GraphQL works as it exposes a schema on the endpoint that you want. So this is the schema you can see on the right hand side here. It also auto generates docs for you. So you can see all the new fields here. So for instance, search by criteria, it shows you all the details of what the strings, what the various arguments are and how you then traverse into these, um, these features here. And you can see here the, the search result which is the piece on the left-hand side over here. 
So we'll just do some basic queries here. So really simple search here. You can see the result already on the right here. This is um, searching for a specific item. So you know the identifier within Elasticsearch, which you can also build from a, a TCM URI as well if you need to. And then you can add, as you can in any other GraphQL thing, any of those fields that you want. So if you want the content of this, you'll see you can add it to the right hand side here. Um, if you don't want the fields, you can get rid of that. So you can just select just the data that you're really interested in. Obviously, URL doesn't make sense on a component in this form. Um, and then you saw on the previous page, we have this broker result. So what we've done for search, because you're essentially bringing content from two data sources now, one from Elasticsearch Index and another from the, the broker database, we've given you the option to be able to combine the results on a single request here. So if you include the broker result, it will then do an additional request onto the, the backend broker database, which is an RDBMS database. If you don't include the broker result, then it just queries Elasticsearch direct. So some of this content is um, overlapping, so you can get a lot of this content from the broker and from Elastic. But for search performance reasons, you probably just want to use the Elasticsearch results alone. But if, you, if there are things you need from the broker, then there's nothing to stop you um, getting it from here as well. So in this example here, we can put in a, a simple query to get custom metadata um, that's defined on the broker itself. So I think we've got key value. The value type in there. So you can see in this case it's pulling back some additional custom metadata from the broker here, showing you the type of it. Um, I mean, even some of this is indexed with Elastic, but it's just an example of how you can pull this content together. That's a basic search. Um, this example here is using, we well, can add a sample here showing you how the cursor functionality works. So you can see if you include cursor on your um, results, you get a, a cursor pointer on each node result coming back. So if I did in the first query here, first two, that means it only give me two results. If I then wanted the next one, you would then do um, after and then you can put in the name of the cursor. So in this case, mg equals equals. Uh, let's put the next two next first. So that then pulls back the next two in the list. So you can see they have different cursor IDs here. So that's just an example how the cursor function works. So this is a search by field. So in this case, I'm specifying a specific field. Let's take the case content English. And you can see the results here. This is actually docs content coming back here because the data is stored in the same way in both docs and sites within the Elastic Index. But if I add to this, Uh, the namespace on there, you can see that docs content has a namespace ID of two, obviously sites content would have a namespace ID of one. Um, this sample here is an example of binary content. So again, it's the same query that I was using before, um, but you can see it's returning the actual binary content. This is the one we saw in the example as well. What else can we show? The custom search here is an example of that custom query that we saw earlier. So this is a criteria that's been built using the criteria builder. It's looking for, in this case, a similar kind of string that you can build with the regular one, in this case, European. And you can see on the right, it's pulling back content that has European written in it. And then the final one here is a uh, search by criteria. So this is an example of how you can do sort of basic criteria building. You can see you've got an AND um, operator here. You can build up various layers of ANDs and ORs, add different fields and things to these. Um, and then you'll get the results. So in this case, um, looking for a namespace-ish. You can see that there. And the content English is obviously finding 
things with the word paragraph in, as you can see in the results. <coughs> so that was the, the new change that we've done to GraphQL. And hopefully this will be of um, use to Trillion Sites customers and Trillion Docs customers, actually, because right now Trillion Docs can only access search using the existing IQ query REST API. So that's still available and you can still use that, but you can now build far richer experiences and web applications using this new search functionality exposed to GraphQL. And it would allow you to build um, sort of single page web applications, for instance, that could talk using perhaps a GraphQL. So you could build a JavaScript GraphQL client using something like Apollo, talking to our service, and then being able to query the Elastic Index directly and get the results back. So I hope that's been useful. Um, obviously, if you have any follow-up questions, there are um, feedback channels that you can use for these webinars, and we can respond to them in due course. That's all. Thanks very much.